Last Babylon by Pat Frank. There are a handful of apocalypse books that stand out. As a matter of fact, Eastern Press has a, has a pack this style of these books bunched together. They're basically considered the greats. One of them is Lucifer's Hammer, which deals with a, a meteor hitting Earth and the after effects of that. Earth Abides is another one of my favorites that deals with uh, a virus that takes out most of humanity. I Am Legend, which was turned into a, a movie, obviously, and that's more about vampires and also, again, a virus. On the Beach, which I haven't read, I think that one's more of a nuclear war as well. And finally, A Last Babylon, which is by far one of my favorite apocalypse books. It's easy to see where Pat Frank gets his inspiration. The book was published in 1959, just a few years into the Cold War. So this is an era where people were afraid of nuclear bombs dropping on them and wiping out our infrastructure and dealing with the threat of radiation poisoning and the after effects. With Russia and the United States threatening each other, the doomsday clock and all that going on, people were living on a hair trigger. And Pat Frank wrote this book as kind of a outline in how a limited nuclear strike would play out and how the aftermath would be. The story itself uh, revolves around the main character, Randy Bragg, who lives in a small town of Fort Repose, which I think that's a fictional town. And he really captures the, um, the feeling of the uneasiness of the people, talking about uh, the bombs being dropped, references to the, the Cold War and possibly their subs off the coast. And Pat Frank dedicates the first, you know, little bit of the story to kind of settling where Randy is in his life, just kind of aimlessly drifting through life. I think he was like retired or something and just kind of a, almost sounded kind of like a loser. Until one day he gets a telegram from his brother and at the end of it, he has the words, Alas Babylon. And that's where the title comes in, which is another thing Pat Frank did well. Very subtle way of tying in the title. If you read the title, Alas Babylon, you have no idea what it's about. And that's kind of the point. It was a code between the two brothers, a code that they used from childhood on, from sitting in church and hearing the preacher say from the platform, Alas Babylon, and booming it out and really terrifying the kids. They'd use it as a code between them their whole lives to warn each other. And so his brother never forgot it. And so, like I said, he got it in his telegram and he, his brother told him to meet him at an Air Force base. The person who got the telegram had no idea what it meant, but it chilled Randy, terrified him, knowing what his brother did for a living, and that's how the story starts. The Last Babylon probably is probably one of my top 10 books of all time because of how it's written. Pat Frank captures, I think, really the environment and the uneasiness of the era, and also he takes time to develop the character Randy from basically kind of a, I don't know why I'd call him a loser, but drifting aimlessly to becoming really a powerhouse in the town. I don't really think I'm giving too much away by saying that there is a nuclear exchange between the US and Russia, and that's basically the main plot point. But that happens pretty early on. The character doesn't have that much notice. He has a little bit of notice from his brother, from the warning that he got. So he was able to prepare a little bit, not enough for it to go by easily, just enough to make things interesting, just enough for him to get a little bit of a head start, but the character is still very challenged through the whole book. Infrastructure is completely wiped out. The description of how the bombs go off, Pat Frank describes the impact as a crescendo reaching the town and shaking the houses. He describes the sight of the mushroom clouds as if it's the horizon sprouting another sunset. And I think that was really the moment in the plot where the main character, Randy, really changed from his kind of aimless streak to really starting to rebuild the infrastructure. And also, I really liked how he tied in his neighbors and also being written in the 50s, especially written in the 50s and in the South. Pat Frank does a good job of ca capturing the um, segregation and that plays a major part in the story. His neighbors being black and also very poor. I love how he ties in that because they were poor, they were forced to be innovative in how they, where they got their water, fishing, all these things were invaluable after the bombs dropped. And like I said, the infrastructure was wiped out. So things like diabetics, where they they don't get insulin anymore, they end up dying off. A very realistic story on a small town, isolated, and how they get through getting the necessities in life and restoring order, probably most all, from the highwaymen and all the other threats that they get. 
There's probably only one other book that I really enjoyed as much as this one, but I read it when I was a much younger person, and that was Z for Zachariah. I also dealt with nuclear war. These two are probably on par for me, although Z for Zachariah is probably geared more towards a younger audience. This one is probably a little bit more adult, but probably a, a more modern take on this type of a book would be One Second After. Now that book is a little bit different in, as in like where Alas Babylon has highwaymen and robbers and things like that. It doesn't seem like it takes long in One Second After where the author predicts that basically you're going to have cannibals. Basically people just go crazy and start eating each other and everything else. I think we, I like to think that towns have more innovative people in them and would be able to build greenhouses and figure out ways to feed themselves. I don't think they go resort to cannibalism within the first couple of months, like one second after it says. So that being said, even so many years later, I think A Last Babylon is still probably one of the best nuclear war apocalypse type books. Check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll talk to you next time.